Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our journey at Barca um, and try to be very quick so we can all go out to lunch, I think. I'm, the, I'm, I'm here between you and lunch. Um, so Barca Fund is a supporting and investing in African entrepreneurs tackling climate change. Okay. So we like to start with this quote in terms of our beginning. Addressing climate change in Africa presents a $3 trillion um, investment opportunity. And so we started our journey thinking about where does this $3 trillion going to come from? Um, if we ask African governments to be able to provide this $3 trillion, they just don't have enough money, right? We learn about it needs in infrastructure, it needs in education. They're not going to be able to provide this $3 trillion. Uh, we asked the climate finance um, and the development finance institution who would like to support government to write us a check for $3 trillion. DFC is one of our backers. We say, DFC, would you, li would you like to write a $3 trillion check? They say, no, thank you. They will not do that. And so we all know we need to get the private sector involved in, this, in, in having an opportunity and having an impact on, um, on climate challenges that African continent face. And so our solution came in from the private sector. How can we get more private sector, more private sector focus, commercially minded investors to come into this space in Africa? We did not try to raise a $3 trillion fund, but we're trying to raise a $20 million fund. We'll start with $20 million. Um, and so this is our approach. One of the things that we've done very early on is separate the need for technical assistance, the need for investment readiness for these companies we want to invest in versus investing. And my colleague, Candy, was on the panel before, if you're in the room, he talked a lot about our technical assistance uh, facility. So just like any uh, um, investment fund, we spent some time doing sourcing and screening, uh, working directly with incubators program, local incubators, um, and people on the ground to find companies in the climate space. And we'll give you a little bit more about what does it mean to be a climate business in Africa. And also then we have the investment readiness program, which uh, thankfully we have funded separately and able to support companies so they can get investment ready. We spend a lot of time going from just uh, putting together a board to understanding your processes to formalizing yourself. Um, and then on the, on the, on the other half of the... Um, a screen is then the investing piece, which is where we can prove the model that you can invest in these type of businesses, help them scale, and therefore attract more private sector capital that's needed for climate companies in Africa. Um, and just like any investment fund, we have a post-investment uh, support. Um, this makes us Investor Plus. We love this branding because beyond just investing and waiting for capital uh, to work its magic, we are hand-holding, we're helping build an ecosystem of climate entrepreneurs who can scale their impact and their, and their revenue really fast with our support. So we love this branding about being Investor Plus. Um, and so two, two entities that are doing this work right now, Barca Impact, I'll go through it really quickly and, and talk about what we've done, and then Barca Capital, which is the investment piece, and then at the end of the day, what does this all mean for us and the work that we're trying to do? Uh, so Barca Impact, we've been able to support uh, with, with uh, support from our donors, uh, 23 companies um, in this year alone. Um, and we, we have them divided in clusters, so companies from the Great Rift Valley of Kenya, um, and the Great Rift Valley of Kenya is important if you're in the climate space. Um, and so companies that are in the, in the climate sector in, from, this, uh, from this region in 2024, and then the Lake Kivu and Risuzu Basin, which is DRC, Burundi, and Rwanda. So entrepreneurs, young men and women building ventures in this region, we've been able to work with this year. Um, what does our program look like? The investment readiness, it's a five-phase program, in-person kickoff, um, so we meet them in person, then we have virtual learning labs that we offer. Again, what does it mean to, to have an equity investors, those kind of pre pre being prepared to understand, you know, um, a term sheet, um, you know, and, and be able to understand what a term sheet is about, all of that we prepare companies. We do on-site visit, right, to validate and to say actually this company exists. Uh, we do business assessment to make sure that we have a baseline of where these companies are before we invest, and then we do founder showcase. Um, the founder showcase is actually really um, uh, one, one of our, I, I guess, uh, hallmark, and these, these founders actually appreciate this. So instead of doing a typical, uh, you know, get on, on, on a podium and pitch to a bunch of investors, we sit them down across 10 investors, an opportunity to pitch 10 times, um, and be able to have five minutes conversation. Right? No one is going to meet you and give you a $100,000 $100, check right, after one meeting. It's, it's all about trying to build a relationship with investors. And so this readiness, this, this awareness of how to get investment 
from the, from the ecosystem matters. And so that's part of our uh, investment readiness program. Um, so this is our numbers, key matrix for 2020, 2024, right? 20, 23 companies, 21 companies, 23 participants, 50% uh, female owned. Very, very proud of that. We find female founders. Uh, we are female-led funds, so it matters to us to support these women, uh, and, and these women, young women build these businesses. Um, we've completed 17 reports, right? And these reports run from 20 pages to 30 pages on each one of the businesses. And then we've been able to secure $350,000 in funding. So this, this has come through, the funding has come through our partners. We haven't closed Barca Fund yet, Barca Capital yet. And so, but what we've been able to do was uh, companies that have worked, that we've worked with and we can vouch for, been able to find them funding um, while we're waiting to close the fund. And so we're really proud of this achievement. The other type of funding is grants. Some of the companies in our cohort are too small, right? They're, 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 they're pre post revenue, but they're still too small. And so we help them get grants uh, to get to the milestone. And that's adding value. In terms of market capital, this is where our journey started. But before we got here, we did a lot of work. Um, we are a blended finance vehicle. We're a $20 million fund. Um, being backed right now by, say, the, by DFC as one of our funders, uh, one of our LP um, and a few others. Um, and it's basically two funds. The first one invests um, equity, and so that's Barker Capital Fund 1 and Barker Capital Debt SPV. It's actually uh, a loan facility to be able to uh, focus and, and uh, support companies in which we have equity investment. Um, it's registered in Mauritius. Um, the team is based in Cote d'Ivoire. We're all based in, in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and so this is what the blended finance vehicle looks like. We had to get creative. We didn't start like this. Um, like every other investment or fund managers maybe in this room, you think you're just gonna get a GP LP structure and then you get some invest investment and LPs to back you up and then you're done. Uh, but our, our, and that's how our journey started, but this is where we end up two and a half years later, uh, which I understand is actually an achievement after three years of fundraising to be able to close. Um, but we are able to get to somewhere where um, LPs are satisfied and they're backing this idea. Uh, in terms of what we're looking for, fund economics, you know, very typical, we're conservative, we think we get to 10% return as first time fund managers. Uh, our fund life's about 12 years and then on the debt facility, we're paying seven and, seven and a quarter on the interest on a 10 year uh, loan. That is the debt SPV. Again, happy to go into any details if anyone is interested. Um, our impact framework, we are an impact fund, right? And, and, and um, well, I, forgot, I didn't get the slide. What, what does it mean to be a climate entrepreneur in Africa? For us, it's really three sectors. Um, it's um, agribusinesses, so aggregator plus model, young men and women who are, who are working with smallholder farmers, provide technical assistance, provide climate smart seed, but most importantly, provide access to market, right? They, they buy the production, whether it's moringa, avocado, shea, uh, we've seen, um, you know, the, 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 they're, 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 they're ready to buy the production, add some value, transforms it, either locally and then export, and, uh, and either sell it locally or export uh, the, the, the commodity. So those are companies that we call aggregator plus model. Then we have tree planting businesses. We have companies that are trees, uh, that are nursery, right? And, and they're just doing it from a commercial perspective, not, not a nonprofit. Um, and so tree planting and protecting is part of the metrics that we look at in terms of uh, our investment. And then we have also others, including uh, gender, gender. And then really important is social community value, right? Research has shown when you invest $1 in, in Africa, right, it typically um, leads to about $13 in social value being created. And so based on that, we're helping bring this, these numbers to the continent. And we're very, very proud to have partners who are helping us measure um, this impact and um, uh, this, this, this vision that we have about the fund uh, once the fund has, has uh, completed its investment. Um, so a couple of case studies, I was talking about this aggregator plus model, right? This is exciting because this is one of the company in the portfolio. Just a couple of things, so we went to visit them uh, back in December, their Shea value chain in Ghana, right? They created software, the young woman created software to just have traceability, to be able to just trace the companies that supply the Shea. And because she's able to provide traceability, she gets a 30% premium on the Shea that she sells to wholesaler, who then sell it to the big cosmetic company who transform it. So there isn't even a processing or transforming element to their business, all right? This is a, a, a company based in Wa in, in, in the northern region of Ghana. You know, she created uh, at least 
uh, 13 jobs, so this is the team we visited. Uh, Impact, she started working with uh, 500 smallholder farmers, and then by 2022, last year, 2023, she had 65,000. And this is one of my investors, actually the lawyer, you know, learning how to make shea, right? But the thing that's exciting about this company is if you look at the growth, right? She made 115,000 in 2021. By 2022, she got 10X, $1.3 million. Last year, the company made 2.6 million. So these companies exist, right? They're on the continent and we can find them. And we get an investor and ourselves excited about this growth story about companies in Africa, right? And so this is what we're working towards, find more companies like this and convince the ecosystem and the private sector companies who are not seeing this kind of growth and returns uh, in the West to come um, in Africa and support these type of companies. So very excited about this, these companies. And then the other thing we do with these companies is the impact, right? We also are able to, to demonstrate the impact um, and so working with Land and Carbon, uh, which is the Earth Fund, Bezos Earth Fund uh, project, we're able to, to, um, to measure the impact. Um, very quickly, because I think I'm out of time, another company is uh, the big company in, uh, in Kenya. Again, spend time on site visiting these companies, small, but really excited about the potential of this young, young man who's, who's built this company. Um, and then again, using uh, leveraging AI and satellite monitoring to be able to demonstrate the impact. Um, so Abarca, big idea, right? We start with this big idea. We've done the work. We find the pipeline of accelerator program. These are not even the companies. These are the accelerator programs that are working with hundreds of companies, right? In these region, remote region of the world, we have one for the Sahel. We have one in, in, in Kenya and, and the other region where we, we, we operate. And then we work with these accelerator programs to find companies. And this is the big idea, right? The, we're in the better, better mode where our model is bringing acceleration, technical assistance with capital. Instead of it being separate, we want it to be together. And we're doing it under one roof, right? And so we've been able to do that. We want to get to a point where we, we close the fund or we're doing this, this quarter, start investing, and then being able to be in a point where institutional uh, investor, institutional capital can come in, right? That's, that's the three trillion we're looking for. That three trillion coming in we, will prove that the model was right. Uh, it's a new model, it's, it's, a, it's a risk taking, but the idea is we want to get capital risk to these companies in Africa and give them a chance uh, to, to have big impact in the climate sector and in the social impact and where they live. Um, thank you. I don't think we have time for questions, but yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. But happy, happy as well to talk to uh, everyone. Oh, we have one question, okay. If anyone has any questions. Yes, please. Hello, uh, Lindsay Northover, um, House of Lords, UK Parliament. Um, when you talk about, um, you're talking about forestry there, um, how selective are you in terms of what you support? I'm just thinking about the work that's, that went on before um, in the Amazon region, where they planted, they, they did plant trees, but they weren't the appropriate trees for the area. Um, and so I think there's a much greater understanding now of, of what needs to happen. So how do you assess that kind of thing in terms of biodiversity? Yeah. Um, that's a great question and really important for us as well, right? We are a small fund and we realize that and we don't have a lot of capacity in terms of impact monitoring, verification and reporting. And so we've been really lucky and privileged to have partners like the War Resource Institute and the Land and Carbon Lab that I mentioned earlier, right, in terms of our monitoring and reporting. So fortunately, they have all the resources, they have the satellite, they have the data, they have the regulatory compliance. Um, and we were actually working with them in another project called TerraFund even before we started this work, which allow us to have this access where we have a partnership with them where they can tell us, right, what tree species are important, what tree species are, 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 are you know, the wrong, the wrong uh, species in certain regions that we work with and the, with these companies. So part of our investment, part of our capital is linked to doing the right things to, with these companies and providing that support for these companies to be able to get this done. Because otherwise some of these actors in the ecosystem are, are not knowledgeable about some of this stuff, right? So we're very lucky that we have a partnership that allows us to do that. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to have the, the funding or the resource or the scale or the expertise internally as an investment fund to be able to do this right. 
All right, the biggest class. Thank you so much.